Hello everyone, this is Ronan Blue, and for those that don't know me, this channel is all about how my girlfriend and I just started our financially independent debt-free journey since paying off our mortgage. With my newfound freedom, I talk about how we made it happen, the forms of passive income we have, our thoughts of early retirement overseas, personal thoughts, and general financial issues. Today's topic is on the 8 best reasons to retire to New Zealand. Stay till the end of the video to see whether this would be your retirement destination. Just as a disclaimer, the information provided is a general guide and to be used for educational purposes only. For such a little country, New Zealand has a huge personality. It has an astonishing amount of staggering beautiful scenery, making it one of the most beautiful countries in the world. It has an amazing range of landscapes including rainforests, glaciers, mountains, deserts, plains, fjords, and a variety of different beaches. Number 1. Culture in New Zealand New Zealand has a very unique culture. Its diverse and multicultural people are influenced by the British European custom as well as the Maori and Polynesian traditions. The indigenous Maori people first arrived in the country in voyaging canoes over a thousand years ago and developed a distinct culture. They have influenced the arts, the language and even the accents of all New Zealanders. They have the love of the outdoors, sports and the arts that make their Pacific heritage and culture unique in the world. New Zealanders are also known to be very positive people and a friendliness to match. They are known to be private people, but they have a great acceptance of outsiders. When it comes to the hospitality to strangers, travelers have reported that they are delighted by the people, with their openness to talk about anything, the weather, good places to watch a game, or the history of the area, to just name a few. Number 2. Places to live in New Zealand New Zealand is a great place to live. The size of the country is small, but the amount of remarkable places there are to choose from makes it a challenge. Many people come here on vacation, fall in love with this place, and want to move here. Let's take a look at some of the best places to live in New Zealand. Queenstown This place is a year-round great place to be. There are amazing outdoor activities in the summer months and world-class skiing in the winter. It's also a world-famous destination for bungee jumping, skydiving, mountain biking, snowboarding, and jet boating with plenty of outdoor activities. There's concerts and festivals to keep you entertained as well. Napier The cost of living in Napier is much lower than the larger cities. It has a stunning coastline, great vineyards, amazing golf courses, and some fantastic cycleways. It also has a good amount of sunshine all year round and tends to be a bit warmer than some of the larger cities as well. Auckland this is probably the most popular place for people arriving from overseas to be in. It has one of the best waterfront cities in the world, with an abundance of restaurants, amazing regional parks, beaches, great places to head out to, theaters and water sports. But there is a lot of traffic here though, and could be seen as being more expensive than other areas. Some say it's just like any other large city though. Number 3. Food in New Zealand – Fish and Chips the best place to eat this would be on a New Zealand beach during the summer evenings. Freshly caught hoki, terakihai, and snapper are the most common types of fish used, which is then battered and deep fried. Scallops and squid rings are also often included. You can pretty much find this everywhere in New Zealand. Sausage sizzle. This would be a barbecue with sausages. It's very much part of the Maori and Kiwi culture as a whole in New Zealand. You'll see many of them just sizzling walking down the streets at kiwi parties and get-togethers. The sausages tend to be served with a piece of white bread, tomato sauce, and caramelized onions for a deliciously quick and communal meal. Hangi This would be one of the foods from the Maori culture. A great cultural experience where you can even visit a traditional Maori village that includes a hangi meal. It's centered around a feast that is cooked for an extended amount of time underneath the ground. It's like a succulent dish where the meat falls off the bone and you'll have an idea of how tasty a proper hangi can be. Number 4. Things to do in New Zealand New Zealand Māori Māoris have made a mark on New Zealand. The Māori language, culture and traditions are still a massive part of modern New Zealand. Rotorua is the cradle of Māori culture and it is here that most people head to Māori a moray meeting ground for a night of warrior training, tribal singings, hakas, dance, fire pao, and tasty moray hangi feasts cooked in the earth. Cycling along Lake Pukaki, this is worth it. The bike ride passes through some of the South Island's most stunning scenery in North Island's stunning Coromandel Peninsula. The New Zealand government is even looking to invest even more to link up 19 major trails and many smaller ones to create a national circuit stretching for 2,300 kilometers. It will become a new hub for cyclists. Go tramping 
Trekking is called tramping in New Zealand. So they go tramping a lot in the supersized landscapes, craters, lakes, and snow-capped peaks, known to be some of the best tramping on the planet. It's a haven for hikers. You can do even more tramping through the native forests, rivers, and vast valleys. That's going to be one of the most memorable walks of your life. Van camping. This seems to be popular as well. It's free as long as you're 15 kilometers from any town. The roads are usually empty, and nature pulls out all the beauties it could offer. Lines of mountain peaks, beaches, and glaciers. You can be driving through a valley with mountains soaring on either side, then around the corner to find a wild coastline or a tip of a glacier field. Much like being in the movie The Lord of the Rings where it was filmed. Hang in there, we are halfway through. Watch for some more great points coming now. Number five, cost of living in New Zealand. New Zealand has a pretty small market, so imported goods are more costly and you may not be able to find the range of goods you are used to back home. You might feel the strain from the high price of everyday goods. Groceries are reasonable, but if you wish to purchase anything from outside the country, the price is inflated due to a high import tax. Living on a distant island does come with a price. Here is a breakdown of some daily costs of living. A meal at an inexpensive restaurant would be $10.41, between $7.81 and $16.26. A meal for two at a mid-range restaurant for a three-course meal would be $56.93, or between $39.04 and $65.06. Basic electricity, heating, cooling, water, and garbage would be $116.62 a month, between $69.13 and $195.18. Internet, 60 megabytes or more, unlimited data, cable, ADSL, would be $55.74, between $45.54 and $65.06 .06 per month. A cell phone plan would be between $21 and $29 per month. Groceries would be between $560 and $730 per month. Cinema for an international release would be $9. An apartment, one bedroom in city center would be $1,169, between $910 and $1,431 per month. An apartment, one bedroom outside of city center would be $941, between $650 and $1,171 per month. An apartment, three bedrooms in city center would be $2,090 USD, between $1,561 and $2,602 USD per month. An apartment, three bedrooms outside of city center would be $1,590 USD, between $1,301 and $1,951 per month USD. So the cost of living in New Zealand is comparable to many US cities, but the American dollar has traditionally held higher values than the New Zealand dollar though, which may be an added benefit for US expats. When you factor in exchange rates, most day-to-day -day costs in New Zealand are either the same or even lower than those of the states. Number six, buy property in New Zealand. Buying a home in New Zealand has just gotten a lot harder in recent years. Apparently, there was a law that was passed through Parliament banning foreigners from buying into most parts of their residential property market as the government seeks to cool red-hot house prices. But to make mention, only over 3% of home buyers were foreigners in the first quarter of 2018. There was an Overseas Investment Amendment Bill that prevent overseas investors from purchasing existing properties in New Zealand but they will still be able to buy into new apartment complexes in certain other parts of the housing market. The new law doesn't apply to Australian and Singaporean buyers because of existing arrangements between the two countries. But to further mention, even if you are approved to buy property, it doesn't give you the right to live permanently in New Zealand. You still have to go through proper immigration procedures to apply for and renew your visa, which I'll talk about shortly. Number seven, healthcare in New Zealand. New Zealand has a high standard of healthcare. Because of heavy government subsidies, all Kiwis and permanent residents, as well as many work visa holders, can access healthcare for free or a small cost. Both public and private healthcare in New Zealand are excellent. Public care is funded through general taxation, which means that residents receive free or subsidized medical care. For expats to have access to public health care, they need to have New Zealand residency status. But those that do pay extra to use private health care do so to speed up the treatment for non-emergency procedures. Private health care users are, however, still able to use free public health care services as well. 
Expats who are interested to get private health care will be able to choose between international health coverage and local health insurance providers. Number eight, how to live in New Zealand. There are a number of options you can choose from if you're interested in retiring here. Immigration New Zealand has two dedicated visa options to retire in New Zealand. This is to whether you intend to come temporarily or permanently, and whether you have kids or not in the country. There is the parent retirement visa. It will allow you to live, work, and study in New Zealand permanently, but you need a New Zealand citizen or resident adult child willing to sponsor you. To be eligible, you'll need a yearly income of 60,000 New Zealand dollars or $39,000 USD and a million New Zealand dollars or 650,000 USD to invest over four years and another 500,000 New Zealand dollars or 325,000 USD to live on. After four years, you can apply for permanent residency and you may include your partner in this application as well. There's also the temporary retirement visitor visa that will allow you to stay up to two years longer than on a regular visitor visa. You must be 66 years old or above, have 750,000 New Zealand dollars or 487,500 USD to invest in New Zealand for two years. Another 500,000 New Zealand dollars or 325,000 USD to live on. And an annual income of 60,000 New Zealand dollars or 39,000 USD. You may include your partner in this application, but no dependent children. There are also business migration, which include investment visas and entrepreneur visas as well, all publicly available online to view if interested. New Zealand also offers the working holiday visa for a 12 month stay. It will give you that temporary stay while working. You need to be between the ages of 18 and 30 and you're restricted to temporarily work, but it's a good way to know the country to see whether it may be the place for you to retire to in the future. You mentioned it's free for US citizens, but not for the British. Although there are many great points for living in New Zealand, there may be some points that are not so appealing to some. For example, you'll need to prepare to deal with mosquitoes and sandfly bites. You'll need to get that insect repellent ready when enjoying the warm summer evenings in the mountains and on the beaches. It's also so far away from everything being at the bottom of the world. You need to travel quite a distance to anywhere, unless it's Australia or one of the Pacific Islands. It makes overseas holidays very expensive and many expats say they can't afford to visit relatives back home as often as they'd like. The distance from the rest of the world also increases the cost of imported goods as well. It's also said that public transportation is limited and you'll need to get a vehicle to explore areas. There are trains but no nationwide rail networks. Some of the trains only leaves once a day and are expensive. The bus systems are much better however within cities. Although healthcare is subsidized, dental treatment isn't. It's free for children, but the cost for both appointments and treatments for adults is high. It's simply too expensive for even middle income people. But let's look at the positives now. First off, it's one of the safest places in the world. It's also a place to go for a relaxed lifestyle. It's also not packed with a lot of people either, with a country population of 4.8 million. The beaches are peaceful and people are unhurried, and it's hard to find bad restaurants as well. You also hear people who have visited New Zealand of how friendly Kiwis are. And this has a lot to do with their relaxed attitude towards life in general. The nature in New Zealand with its surreal beauty is also made for a movie set. Few destinations have so many staggering natural wonders packed into such a small area. It has a moderate climate, adventure activities, and laid back lifestyle, glorious sandy beaches, great native forests, mountains, lakes, rivers, and fjords. New Zealand is hugely diverse geographically. New Zealand is also a developed country and people here enjoy a standard of living that compares to the United States. Although New Zealand would be a dream retirement destination for many, it would appear that only a few could actually afford to settle there due to some of the strict financial requirements for obtaining a visa. But if you are fortunate enough to have a healthy nest egg, retiring in New Zealand may be that option. Well, tell me what you think of retiring in New Zealand in the comment section below. If you like this vlog, please don't forget to give me a like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit that notification bell for more of my content here. Thank you for watching my vlog. I hope you have a great day and see you soon.